Here are some reminders to help you get the most out of your dive CD lessons. First, work the problems with me. Work every single problem that I work and take notes on everything that I write on the board. One thing I encourage you to do is on the first practice problem, work that one with me, but then for the second and subsequent ones, pause the CD, try to work the problem on your own, then fast forward to the answer. If you got it right, great, you can move on to the next one. If you got it wrong, rewind the CD, look at how to pro solve the problem, and figure out how to do it correctly. Next, anytime you need to, pause and rewind the CD until you understand that particular concept. The ability to pause and rewind so easily is what makes dive CD lessons so much better than a live classroom lecture, so make sure and take advantage of that technology. Next, remember the purpose of math is to teach you to think and to solve problems, to effectively and efficiently think and solve problems. In the lower math levels, there's lots of mental math. In the upper levels especially, this is the most important purpose of math, is to teach you to think and to solve problems. Next, do all of the problems in the problem sets. It depends on the course that you're doing, but typically you'll do three to five problem sets a week, so that means three to five CD lessons plus a test. Next, work the homework problems and your test problems too. Work those vertically. Split your paper in two and work them vertically. And of course, make sure you show your work on your problems too. As you work them vertically, write each step down and write each subsequent step underneath the previous one. And this will help you sometimes to recognize patterns a little bit easier and help you solve the problem better. Also use a calculator sparingly, only for geometry problems and some word problems. Don't use it for math 7, 6 or below that for, for any of that. Algebra half and up, use it sparingly. And lastly, have a good attitude. Every day you do school, you have a choice to make. It is your personal choice to have a good attitude, work hard, do your best, or to be lazy, complain, whine, and have a bad attitude. So choose right now to have a good attitude. Dive in, take advantage of this CD lesson, and do your best to learn the math that you're going to learn today. In Lesson 5, we'll be working with sets, absolute value, and then addition of signed numbers. Let's just start with Section A on sets. A set of numbers, that just designates a collection of numbers, basically, a specific collection of numbers. And, for example, in Lesson 4, we talked about the counting numbers, and we could call that set A, and we could use brackets. A lot of times little brackets are used to enclose that set of numbers. And we know that counting numbers, those start with 1. Then you go on 2, 3, 4, and so on. So that would be a set of counting numbers. So we could say that set A equals the counting numbers, or we could have just said the counting numbers equals and then written the set. Another set of numbers that's real specific is the whole numbers and we'll just call that set B and those are different from counting numbers because they start with zero and then everything else is the same they're basically the counting numbers with zero added you could just think of them like that another important set for you to know about are the integers and we'll call that set C and we put our brackets or braces there and the difference between these and whole numbers is that these include like all the counterparts or opposites of the positive number so let's just put dots on the end to say that we start out you know going negative to infinity and then I'll just start by having negative 3, negative 2, negative 1 it includes 0 just like the whole numbers do and then we start our positive numbers and then we put dots to represent that those continue on forever so that would be the set of numbers called integers. So sets can be specific groups of numbers with specific definitions like set A, B, and C here. Or they could be like set D, which is just the numbers 4, 5, and 6. Now in the problem sets, you may be asked to designate the set of counting numbers, and you would do it just like we have there in set A. You could say A is the set of counting numbers, which equals, and then have your braces, one, two, three, four, dot, dot, dot. 
or you could just say counting numbers equals put your braces in a few numbers in there make sure you put the dots at the end though because that represents that they continue on and that is how the counting numbers are defined that's how the whole numbers are defined too that they start with zero and then they go on forever now part B is on absolute value and let's just take a couple of numbers let's take negative five and positive five now if you just looked at the numerical part of each of those numbers the numeral that's what absolute value is it doesn't have anything to do with the sign and whenever we want to find the absolute value of a number or an operation or anything like that we put basically parallel lines around that say we want to know the absolute value of negative eight and we represent that by those lines so what we would say there is the absolute value of negative eight that's how we would say that statement and it would just be an eight just the numeral part and now we know like when we're writing numbers we don't put the positive sign in front of them usually so really we're saying that it's a positive eight what I would try to think about though when you're dealing with absolute value is whatever's inside those two vertical lines just look at the number part or if there's an operation say you're doing five minus two you would just say the absolute value of that was three well, part C is on sign numbers and addition of sign numbers in particular what they mean by sign numbers are like the integers where they have a negative sign or a positive sign in front of them that's what they're talking about here and in algebra usually you don't do subtraction you do addition and a problem like this 4 minus 1 to do that in what's called algebraic addition you would say 4 plus a negative 1 and I mean you know that 4 minus 1 is 3 so hopefully you can figure out that 4 plus a negative 1 is also 3 a good way to understand it though is to use a number line and so let's just make a number line we'll start at 0 and put some tick marks on there and let's designate 4 on that number line so what we do is we would start at 0 and go to the right 1 2 3 4 okay now we want to add negative 1 to that and so what we'd have to do and I'll just draw an arrow going the other way because that would be in the negative direction that's moving over negative 1 so that means we end up at 3 just like we thought 4 minus 1 is 3 so is 4 plus a negative 1 so in algebra we do what's called adding algebraically instead of doing subtraction we add a negative number really all you have to do you just kinda have to change your way of thinking about subtraction 4 minus 1 is the same thing as 4 plus a negative 1 you just kinda have to change how you think about doing addition and subtraction using these number lines is a really good way to help you think about adding algebraically so let's do a few more practice problems look at practice problem a let's add those two numbers together positive 3 plus a positive 3 so first let's make a number line and let's just put some numerals on there 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 okay now I mean I'm sure you know that that answer is 6 but you're trying to understand how to add sign numbers so just go ahead and draw it out you start with positive 3 so you always start at 0 and then you'll kinda of make a little arrow to the right 3 to represent that you've added 3 and then plus another 3 so you go to the right again 1 2 3 and you would end up at 6 and so that's your answer and since they're wanting you to work with sign numbers here just go ahead and write your answer positive 6 look at another one here positive 3 plus a negative 2 plus a positive 5 so we've got three numbers to add here Let's just go ahead and make a number line and since I see some negative numbers in there I'll go ahead and put a few on the 
number line, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now hopefully you're realizing that it doesn't matter what numbers you put on the number line. You just have to have the right ones so that you basically don't run out of digits when you're trying to do your problems. So here we have positive 3 first. So let's go ahead and add a positive 3. We always start at 0. 1, 2, 3. And then we're going to add a negative 2. So let's go up so we can make our arrow to the left. Negative 1, negative 2 and then we're going to add 5 to that. So let's go up 1, 2, 3, 4 and I didn't make enough tick marks on this one so let's add one more because we need to go 5 spaces and so we would stop at 6. So a positive 6 would be our answer here. So if you need to use a number line to add algebraically, eventually you'll get used to doing this and you won't need to. So, But for right now, you start at zero and then do your addition as you need to, but you always start at zero. Go to the right or the left, depending on whether it's a positive or a negative number first. Let's do another one, and this time let's not use a number line. See if you can do this one on your own without the number line. I always like to add in pairs, so first I would add negative 2 and a positive 7. And so, I'm sorry, positive 2 and a negative 7. You can visualize the number line in your head if you need to, and you'd think to the right 2 and then back to the left 7, so you'd end up at negative 5 if you added those two together. And then plus a positive 3 and a positive 1. Now I didn't put positive 1 in parentheses there, but if you want to, just to keep it consistent, you can put parentheses around it and a plus sign in front of it. And so positive 3 plus a positive 1, that would be positive 4. And so now I have negative 5 plus a positive 4. And again, I can put parentheses just to be consistent here. And so now think about that part you'd go to the left 5 and then back to the right 4 so you would end up at negative 1 and so that would be your answer there negative 1 now let's add a little bit more to this let's do some absolute value problems and remember on these you do the operation inside first and then you take the absolute value of that result and so the first one there we have negative 6 plus 2 which is the same thing as negative 6 plus a positive 2 so just think about that. Think about a number line. You'd go to the left 6 and then back to the right 2. So you'd go negative 5, negative 4. So the answer there, or the sum of those two sign numbers would be negative 4. The absolute value of that would just be 4. And so that would be your answer. Positive 4 or 4, however you want to say that. Now the next problem, you have a negative on the outside of the absolute value sign. So you just, you don't worry about that. It's, you always will have that negative number there, or negative sign there. And so, let's just simplify. Negative, and then 6 plus a negative 2, that would be a 4. And so the answer then, the absolute value of 4 is 4. Keep the negative on the outside. And so you'd have negative 4 as an answer because that negative is on the outside. It doesn't have anything to do with the absolute value part. Something else to think about. What if in practice problem D you would have had a negative sign on the outside? What would your answer have been then? Well, if you said negative 4, that would be correct. Because you would take the absolute value of negative 4, which is 4, and then you would put that negative sign back on. Okay, well that's all for lesson 5.